The bombing of Air India Flight 182 is the largest mass killing in Canadian history. The deadliest aviation incident in the history of Air India and was the deadliest act on aviation terrorism until September 11 attacks in 2001. The remnants of the airliner fell into the ocean approximately 120 miles of the southwest tip of Ireland, killing all 329 people, including 268 Canadian citizens, 27 British citizens, and 24 Indian citizens. The subsequent investigation and prosecution lasted almost 20 years. This was the most expensive trial in Canadian history, costing nearly 130 million Canadian dollars. Joining me to talk about this memorial is Deepak Kandewal, whose family was a victim of the Air India bombing. Deepak's two sisters, Chandra, 21, and Manju, 19, were on board this unfortunate flight. Deepak himself was 17 at the time. He was also scheduled to be on the flight, but cancelled his ticket a few days before the flight to attend a summer program at the University of Calgary. Today I'm joined with Deepak Kandewal. Can you tell us about yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, Deepak Kandilwal. Uh, I'm a senior executive here in Canada, working for companies such as Google, Rogers, McKinsey, CIBC, and I live here in Oakville. What kind of impact did this attack have on you and your family? Well, both of my older sisters were on the flight. So my oldest sister was 21 and she was finishing her pharmacy degree at the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, my other sister was 19 and in second year med school, also at the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, both were Canadian citizens and unfortunately were on that flight. And so it had a pretty devastating impact on our family as we lost uh, two core uh, members, uh, both of my sisters. Did you receive any support from the Canadian government? You know, uh, the Canadian government was pretty slow in supporting the families and the victim families overall. Uh, if you go right from the beginning, when we landed in Ireland to recover the bodies, there was no Canadian support uh, that was there. Uh, there was no grief counseling early on. Uh, so it was very, very minimal at the beginning. Uh, the Canadian government almost treated this as a foreign uh, tragedy. They did not view it as a Canadian tragedy, even though 280 of the 329 people that were murdered were Canadian but they just viewed this uh, as a foreign tragedy. And you know, to give you a couple of examples, or at least one example of that, the prime minister at the time was Prime Minister Mulroney, and he actually sent condolences to the Indian government, but didn't even bother to reach out uh, to the families. Uh, so yes, there was very uh, limited support uh, from the Canadian government uh, in the early days. It did get better over time, but in the early days, very limited. How did the government of Canada handle the investigation into this attack? Well, you know, early on, the investigation had a lot of challenges. And if you take a step back, actually, to the pre-bombing, uh, there was a lot of surveillance issues that happened with turf wars between CSIS and the RCMP. And uh, there was a lot of signals that something like this could happen. Uh, but, you know, the bungling resulted in it not being prevented. Then in the actual investigation, I think they, one, again, thought of this as a foreign tragedy and didn't treat it as a Canadian issue, and so the investigation was very slow. They had issues, again, with different departments. They had issues with surveillance tapes and other evidence being lost or destroyed. And so it really had a hard time getting going. Now, again, things did improve over time, but the investigation early on was uh, very slow moving and had lots of challenges, uh, which is very disappointing. And as a result of it, you know, the people that are responsible for this act never really have been held accountable. Should the government have done more? Well, absolutely. This is a tragedy that I think was completely preventable, uh, should have been prevented. And then when it did happen, it should have been investigated properly. And the uh, people and the bad actors responsible for it should have been uh, held accountable. But that didn't happen. I think the other thing I would say is, you know, if you look at the public inquiry that was done, uh, by Justice Major, retired Justice, Supreme Court Justice Major, uh, you know, he basically said that the government treated the victim families as adversaries. So I think, you know, that's very disappointing and uh, didn't really um, go well on, on how the government supported us. Now, that said, I do think the government has improved on, on, on situations like this. If you look at the Ukrainian Airlines uh, flight PS752 that was shot down last year, I think the government did do a much better response uh, and handling of the situation dealing with the families. 
because you do believe that this was preventable, where does the responsibility lie? Well, yes, I, you know, I, I do believe it was preventable, absolutely. And, you know, there's a lot of blame to go around, but I think, you know, finger pointing at this point in time is not helpful uh, with, with all that happened. All I would just say is that hopefully we've learned the lessons uh, from this incident. We can improve on how we prevent and if these things do happen, investigate uh, scenarios like this. Um, because you really don't want people to pay the price that our family had to pay as well as the family members of 329 other people uh, on the Air India flight that were murdered as well as the uh, two individuals at Narita Airport uh, that were also murdered on the second bomb. What kind of work still needs to be done to fight against terrorism? Well, I think quite a bit of work still needs to be done. Uh, we have to remember that terrorism is not something that happens on foreign soil. There is Canadian-based terrorism that is Plots like this one were hatched in Canada by people living in Canada and executed in Canada. So I would say both the government as well as Canadians and citizens that people that live all in Canada have to be vigilant about making sure that we're aware and cognizant of these bad things can happen, very bad things. And these are not just things that happen in other countries, uh, far away places, but they happen right here in Canada. So we just need to make sure that um, we all work together as the Canadian departments, as well as the people are also vigilant when they see bad activities of reporting them uh, to the proper authorities as well. Why do you think that it took the events of 9-11 for Canadians and politicians to take the issue of terrorism seriously when these attacks occurred over a decade and a half earlier? Yeah, I think, that, like I said, first off, they didn't view this as a Canadian tragedy. Uh, and so they just kind of dismissed it in, in many ways. And I don't think the focus on the investigation, or as I mentioned, the pre-bombing was really there. And it wasn't uh, till 9-11 that I think our Canadian system also learned quite a bit from the US uh, intelligence services on how to investigate and um, pro you know, uh, go after the bad actors. And so that you know, made it very, very difficult and yeah, so I think that's why it took a long time. And so that's very disappointing, but I'm glad you know, in, a, in a weird way that uh, the Americans were able to help us a little bit on finally getting uh, some traction on the investigation on Air India 182. What should Canadians know about this attack? Why is it important to commemorate and remember it? Well, I think Canadians should remember that this is the largest mass murder in Canadian history. It is the second worst act of aviation terrorism other than 9-11. So we should not forget this. 329 people lost their lives, of which 280 were Canadians. And so I think it's really important that Canadians not uh, forget about this. They make sure that we prevent anything like this from ever happening again. If it does happen, we should make sure that we are better prepared to investigate as well as to treat uh, and handle the family members. Um, so there's, there's lots that uh, we need to do and uh, we can do better. How can Canadians support the victims of this bombing and other terrorist attacks? Well, I think Canadians can most importantly not forget that this happened. Like I said, it was 36 years ago. Many people do forget uh, that this happened. I'll, I'll give you an example uh, from last year, which was the 35th anniversary of the bombing. And both of Canada's national newspapers didn't even have a single line covering the story. So that was very disrespectful and I think very disappointing. And so we do need to keep this in our conscience to make sure that we, these 329 people that were lost, 280 of which were Canadians, uh, that doesn't go down in vain and, and for no reason. So I think Canadians can make sure we remember, make sure we learn the lessons from it, make sure we prevent it from happening again and uh, treat family members and the victim families a, a lot more better than we were treated. As again, as Justice Major said um, uh, in the Air India Public Inquiry, we were basically treated as adversaries, uh, which is very, very unfortunate. And so I think those are some of the things. And then the final thing maybe I'll say is uh, the Canadian government has designated June 23rd as the National Day of Remembrance for all victims of terrorism. And so we should remember that, and hopefully people uh, will remember all victims uh, on June 23rd. Thank you, Deepak, for joining me today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You were watching News Talk at the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby.